Visit SailRight.com for your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to upholster a cornice using fabric from SailRight. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. In this first chapter, we're going to be showing you how to attach the sew foam. This is the valance box uh, that was up there and we removed the fabric from it. Uh, we're going to reuse this box again. We're going to add a sew foam to it to give it a more uh, soft look. What this is is basically a fabric on this side and then foam on this side. The idea is that you can sew through this and since it has a fabric on this side, the stitch won't pull through. Now I always like to have the fabric side up against my solid surface. So I'm going to take my uh, balance box and put it here and make sure I have enough to wrap around to the back side here. And you can either glue this or you can staple it in place. I am going to staple it with a quarter inch staples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and just give it a few little staples. This is the inside. Nobody's going to see this. Just make sure that it's tight. And then here, what I'll do is I'll cut off some of the excess because we don't need all this uh, fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut um, right to the edge of the uh, material here like this. Since this is a quarter inch sew foam, I'm not going to make a cut here because you can see here when I, when I basically take this fabric and force it into this corner, it really does take a nice uh, turn there. So I'm just going to force that in the corner and put a staple here. And then I'm going to cut off some of this here because I don't need that. Just need to make sure that I have enough going over the edges. Pull it taut and staple it here. Then we'll just put this on and put a few staples just to hold it in place. Remember, we're going to have our fabric here as well, so our fabric will even secure it even better or more. In this next chapter, we'll be cutting and installing the fabric. We have our fabric here, and we're just going to cut it about uh, six inches over here and six inches over here, and obviously enough to wrap around the edges. So here's our. Uh, our balance wrapped in the quarter inch sew foam and now we're just going to place it on top of this fabric and we'll start with this end. Now what we want is we want the fabric to look good here and also coming around the sides. So since the fabric has to take a turn here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some pleats in this. So notice I grab the fabric here and I just curl it around and it almost creates natural pleats on its own. See there's a pleat here. And I'm just going to make sure that pleat is pulled over to the back side. And then I'm going to put a staple in here. I can always remove this staple if I don't like it. And then I'm going to pull a little bit more here to create another fold. There's no fold here. This looks good. I'll put another staple here. And then we got another couple pleats going in to, to make this turn. So all you want to do is just work with it, your fabric and make sure that these the folds are to the inside here. I think that's going to work. I'm going to put a staple there. Then I'm going to lift it up here and I'm going to make sure this is pulled tight. So I'm going to grab the fabric here and I've got a little bit of a wrinkle here at the corner but there's a lot of um, transition here. So I'm going to try to pull it out to make sure that it looks good and I can manipulate the, the fold to make it right at the corner like that. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hold tight and I'm going to put a staple right here. Yeah, that looks good. Now let's get rid of this bulk. So we have a lot of bulk here and we don't need all that. So I'm going to cut some of this out. Um, I can go to a longer staple. I'm using the quarter inch leg right now. I'm going to switch it to the 3 8 inch leg staple and then I don't have to 
I, my staple will go in much deeper that way. There we go. Much better. Okay, there is a slight pattern to this, and I'm going to notice that this side's longer because I might actually hem this back to staple it on top. So I want to try to keep this pattern, which I can see in this, fairly straight here. So I'm going to look to make sure that it's straight as I staple it down, and I'm going to just put some preliminary staples in it right now, uh, and then we'll put more in in a little bit. So the pattern is should be nice and straight now, and we'll secure this side, putting a little bit of pressure on it. We're not pull, this side's not secure yet, so we can use it to tension it even more. Okay, so that is straight. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to basically do that same thing again. We're going to kind of staple it in place and create some pleats that look pleasing. Okay, I'm going to fold the fabric over and I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to make sure that my slight pattern, it doesn't have much of a pattern, is going um, perpendicular to the bottom edge or top edge, it doesn't matter. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure here. Now I've got all the scrap fabric here. I'm going to put a staple basically here. Nobody's going to see this inside edge. Make sure your pattern is looking straight. You can see the pattern here even. I'm going to try to keep my staples all in a line as I work to the left side and the right side. Okay, we're at this point right here, we're at, we're at the corner, and so you want to look at it, and, and then you want to just create the, your tucks to make sure the corner looks good. Notice I have a fold here, and that's partly because I have a staple there that's holding that fold in place. So uh, it's not uncommon, in fact, it's a short staple too. It's not uncommon. It's not uncommon to sometimes remove staples and position them in a better spot to get that fold where I want it, and I'd rather have the fold at the corner because that's where the fabric has to take the turn. So right there is uh, basically how I like it, and I'm using the longer leg staples now. So we'll put the staple there, down here. Yeah, that looks good. Now, we, we still have some bumps here. That's because we haven't put in uh, staples evenly across the the edge. So now I'm going to put my staples, uh, you know, very close together and pull these out so that it looks consistently smooth along this edge. If one is too tight, I'll pull it out, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I have everything in position. Now I'm going to staple it down more securely, and I like the way it looks. So we have this all stapled down. And I can still peel this back and I can make sure that these have uh, nice edges and put a few more staples in it just like we did there. So make sure it's nice and flat. Sometimes you could just use the nose of your staple gun to kind of pull your fabric taut. So you can either cut out a little bit more of this stuff, which I probably should. Uh, and you'll need some good scissors for this because there's a lot of bulk here. Um, but don't cut into where it's going to be visible. And then I, I like to just staple the bejeebers out of it to get everything to sit nice and flat. And a good staple gun like the Sarah upholstery staple uh, gun works really well for this because it's powerful and inexpensive. So make sure everything sits as flat as possible like that. And we'll do that on the other side as well. We could put some staples here too. Okay, if you see any spots that don't look very tight, like right here, what you can do is actually just put a, so take your staple gun and it's a little bit loose there. 
and just kind of create a little bubble in it and put a staple there and that takes that right out. So you can make this almost perfect just by doing that. And you notice I did a little bit more over here. I didn't show that on the video, but uh, we wanted to make sure that you understood that you could tighten it up your fabric even though you have a roll of staples in it. In this chapter, we'll be installing the cornice. Onto the valance, we screwed this board just with three screws that we're not gonna go through uh, the front side. And you notice that we have screws up here that we wanna try to avoid. That's why the board uh, doesn't go all the way to the end so that we could position it. And I've already uh, uh, did a, uh, what do you call it? A fitting to make sure that I have it the height that I want it. And this is exactly where I want it installed. And notice how it curves here, goes against the headliner. Now we don't have our trim here yet. We're, we have to do that a little bit later on here. Now in, in order to screw it in, we're gonna take this out because I'm gonna screw it from the bottom side and this is in the way. All right, we're gonna put two other screws in and then we'll put our, our shade back in and we'll be done. And here's our finished fabric covered window cornice. Next up, a list of the materials and tools we use to accomplish this project. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy Renovation Series.